Um, my name is Susie Gage and I'm a second year PhD student based at the University of Bristol. Um, I work on a large data set called Children of the 90s or ALSPAC as it's also known. So we're looking at sort of population health, how changes in populations might affect changes in health across those populations. I'm currently in the process of trying to get some research published. So I've written a paper about whether um, a mother's weight gain during pregnancy might affect the child in terms of the child's intelligence. So I started this work um, at the end of 2010 and it's been submitted to one journal. It unfortunately got rejected from that journal. It's been submitted to another journal and we're just re-editing it to submit to that journal again for a second time. Um, the things that you think about when you're writing a journal article is it's quite important to think about where you want to submit it because there are some journals that are aimed at all different types of science. So journals like Science and Nature will take papers on all sorts of subjects, but it has to be really, really special, novel, interesting, fantastic research, basically. Um, with this research, it's definitely very interesting and no one's really done what we're doing before, but it's only perhaps interesting to certain specific people. Um, when we started writing the article, we were aiming it at a journal called Paediatrics, which is a journal based on a specific type of research, namely research into children. So it's not like a big journal that does all, covers all kinds of topics, but in the field that it's in, it's very, very highly regarded and so read by a lot of people who also do work into, into children, into paediatrics. So paediatrics has an English language circulation of about 66,000, I think. So although that's not necessarily very many, it's very targeted audience. So the people who read paediatrics are researchers into paediatrics um, and that kind of area. So it's the people who really, really want to know about your research. It's a very targeted audience. So when you send an article that you've written into a journal, what will happen is the editor or some people that work for the editor will sort of look over it very briefly and decide whether they think it has the potential to be published in that journal. And if they think it's worth further investigation, it will then be sent out to peer review. So what this means is that it will be sent to perhaps two or three experts in the field in which you've written and they will cast a much sort of more thorough critical eye over what you've written and um, from your methodology to spelling mistakes, all that kind of thing, and they'll write a report about your paper, um, which will then give their opinion as to whether they think it should be published or not. And this will get sent back to the editor, and then the editor will make a final decision based on all of the peer review and their own opinion as to whether it will be rejected outright or whether perhaps um, they will ask you to make some substantial changes to it or whether they'll just accept it straight away, but that's quite unusual. And then the outcome of all this will then get sent back to the author. After we got rejected from paediatrics, we had to find another journal to submit it to, so we decided to submit to the American Journal of Epidemiology, which is a slightly broader journal, but it also accepts more papers. So what we had to do was reformat our article for the American Journal of Epidemiology, as well as take on board all of the comments from the reviewers from paediatrics. So we did this, and we've submitted it to the American Journal of Epidemiology. And when it went out to peer review again, and when we got the comments back, it had been rejected. But the main reason they'd rejected it was perhaps what we considered to be a misunderstanding. So we wrote a letter of appeal to the editor of the American Journal of Epidemiology. And this appeal was upheld. They agreed that perhaps we had been misunderstood. So our job now is to really clarify what we meant that caused the misunderstanding, and then cross our fingers and resubmit it. I think it's really, really important that papers get reviewed by experts. Although you might say that it's holding up the research, it's true for, for, paper, for all papers, they all have to be peer reviewed, so it only holds up the research as much as the next person's research is being held up. And I guess the most important thing about peer review is that it stops, well, it, it's meant to stop sort of fraud or misrepresentation of results, it helps everyone to to remain tempered with the conclusions that they draw, it would be, it's very easy to make wild claims and misrepresent your results. And if you don't have peer review, it could be much more easy to run away with yourself and the results that you're writing. 
So sometimes getting rejected from a journal can be quite depressing. So we PhD students here have come up with a novel way of dealing with this. And can I present to you journal rejection bingo. So every time we get rejected, we get to stick a star on a bit of paper and it makes us all feel better. <laughs>